Ever feel like the best ideas, the ones that really make you think they're right there in front of you, kind of hiding in plain sight? We're about to dust one off today, see if it still holds up. We're diving into this article from way back in 1969. We can't get there from here. That's the catchy title. Gary A. Rumler wrote it, and let me tell you, he really struck a nerve with this one, questioning the very core of how companies approach training. And you know what? People are still wrestling with these ideas today. So whether training programs are like your jam, or maybe you've sat through your fair share of corporate training sessions, good, bad, and the ugly, or even if you just find it fascinating how organizations try to help people reach their full potential, well, this deep dive's for you. Buckle up, because we're about to see training in a whole new light. Picture this, it's 1969, the world's spinning a little faster than usual, lots of changes happening, and Rumler, he's already waving a red flag. He sees this massive disconnect, right? Between how companies treat training and what they actually need to do to actually boost performance. It's a head scratcher. And Rumler, yeah, he doesn't sugarcoat it. He lays it out there, this pretty stark picture of how training departments were viewed back then, underfunded, underappreciated, like, they were the ones stuck handling the logistics, not the ones solving the big juicy problems. Uh. He even went so far as to say they were just one step short of being in show business. Ouch! Can you believe he said that? Yeah, that show business comparison, that was a real zinger. But, to be honest, it still kind of stings a little bit today, you know, because it still rings true in a lot of places. Yeah. To understand why, I think we got to rewind a bit. Go back to the way organizations were structured back then. Think that, like, super hierarchical, very function focused. You see, training wasn't viewed as this dynamic tool for growth. You know, it was siloed, just another box to check on the to do list. It's almost like giving someone a broken compass and saying, all right, go navigate your way to this undiscovered island. Good luck. Exactly. And that's where Rumler throws this curveball. He says, trainers, they need to become technologists. And I know you're probably thinking, wait a minute, are we talking about trainers or IT specialists here? Yeah, let's unpack that technologist thing a bit. It definitely sounds like he's pushing for something more than just knowing the ins and outs of the latest e-learning platform or software. Right on. You hit the nail on the head there. For Rumler, technology and training, it's about taking these principles of human behavior, how people learn best, what motivates them, and applying them systematically, scientifically. It's less about the tools themselves and more about using our understanding of people to crack the code of how to make them more effective. So it's almost like approaching training as if it were an engineering problem. You've got these principles and you need to apply them strategically to build something that actually works. You got it. That's it. And Rumler, he brings up another interesting point, too. He noticed this huge discrepancy back then. And, well, it's still around today in some cases. Companies would pour money into fancy equipment the latest technology. But when it came to investing in their people, they'd hesitate to spend even a fraction of that. It's like they're putting people in the expense column instead of the investment column, you know? Just doesn't make sense. Exactly. Roller's big idea, it's that investing in people, their skills, their knowledge, their growth, that should be just as crucial as any other strategic investment a company makes. It's like that old saying, what's the use of having a top-notch race car if you don't have a skilled driver behind the wheel? You need both to win the race, right? And what Rumler is getting at is that trainers, they have the potential to be those human performance problem solvers, those yeah. drivers of real organizational success. Right. And he doesn't just leave it there, you know, with this big idea. He actually lays out a roadmap like here's how trainers can become those problem solvers. Yeah. He points to two key things they need. First, a deep understanding of, like, the science behind behavior, things like motivation, adult learning theory, how to actually get people to change the way they do things. So we're not talking about just slapping up some motivational posters in the break room and hoping for the best. It's exactly. It's about ditching the death by PowerPoint approach, yeah. right? Yeah. It's about really understanding how adults learn and retain information and how to engage them in a way that leads to real change. Mm -hmm. And the second ingredient, this is where it gets really interesting, I think, Rumler. He emphasizes a systems thinking approach. Ah, systems thinking. It's not enough to just like design a training program in a vacuum. Right. right. It has to connect to the bigger picture. You got to be able to connect the dots between the training and like the organization's goals, the challenges specific teams are facing, even the systems and processes they're using every day. And this is where he tells that story about the training manager, right? right. The yeah. one who keeps getting asked to fix Problems that are, well, honestly, way outside of their control. Oh, yeah, I remember that one. It's like, oh, no, our production line is messing up. Quick, someone create a training program. Or, uh-oh, team morale is in the basement. Can you, like, 
organize a trust fall or something. Yeah, it's like training is this magical band-aid that's supposed to fix any and all problems. Exactly. And it highlights how often training gets misapplied. Like it's a quick fix for deeper organizational issues that actually need a totally different approach. Yeah, and that's a recipe for frustration all around, isn't it? Trainers feel like they're constantly putting out fires. Mm -hmm. And the leaders, they don't see the real value of training because, well, it's not being used strategically. It's a vicious cycle. So how do we break out of that cycle? It sounds like Rumler's suggesting that trainers, they need to get a lot more savvy, not just about training itself, but about like how businesses actually work, about how to measure their impact, and maybe most importantly, how to speak the language of those organizational leaders. Definitely. Being able to show the value of training in a way that makes sense to leadership. That's key. And I'm talking concrete, measurable terms. Mm -hmm. Not just saying, hey, this training will make people better. It's about being able to answer the so what question. How is this training going to affect those key performance indicators? How is it going to boost the bottom line? Right. It's about shifting that mindset from training activity to business impact and showing how those two are totally intertwined. It's about earning that seat at the table where the big decisions are made, you know, and proving that training, it's not just a line item in the budget, it's a vital part of success. It's really about making the case that investing in people, it's not just like the nice thing to do, it's the smart thing to do if you want your business to thrive. It really is. Rumler's message, it's a good reminder, good kick in the pants maybe. Training, when it's done right, it can be a game changer not just an afterthought. Absolutely. But it does require a real shift in mindset from both sides, actually. Right. It's got to be a two-way street. Trainers, we need to step up, become those human performance technologists he talks about, show everyone what we can really do. And the folks in charge, the leaders, they need to get on board with this idea, see the potential that training has, and you know, actually put their money where their mouth is, invest in it. Couldn't have said it better myself. So as we wrap up our deep dive here, you know, looking back at Rumler's article, this question keeps popping into my head. What if we really embraced training, like fully embraced it, treated it as this performance enhancing technology? What could we achieve? What could we do? Right. I mean, if organizations really saw their people as their most valuable asset right up there with the latest tech and all that, just imagine what could they accomplish if they put the same amount of energy into developing their people? That's the real revolution Rumler was talking about, isn't it? It's bigger than just delivering training programs. It's about unleashing human potential. That's how organizations really grow, how they reach their full potential. And you know what? That's how we make work and the world a little bit better, one training program at a time. So until next time, keep those ideas flowing. And remember, investing in people is always a good idea. Mm -hmm.